All right, y'all, got a little bit of good news for you. Um, actually, I'd say it's more than a little bit of good news. Yeah, I think it's a lot great. of bit of good news. Um, so, some Starbucks workers were fired because they were trying to organize, which is a little thing that I like to call illegal. Um, that is not allowed, but given our uh, wild, wild west environment when it comes to regulations of businesses, you would think, ah, oh, they're just going to get away with it. Like, you know, there's going to be no repercussions for this whatsoever, no consequences. Howard Schultz is a massive prick. He's the CEO of uh, Starbucks that had left, but now he came back specifically for the purpose of union busting. True. Um, well, Crystal, I know you have some, some updates for us on that. What yeah. What the deal is. So this is the group. They were known as the Memphis 7. Um, Memphis followed pretty quickly in the footsteps after uh, the first Buffalo Starbucks stores organized. So it was really significant um, that this Memphis store ultimately uh, formed a union. And so uh, they were fired and the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, sued Starbucks asking for those workers to be reinstated. I think the way this went legally is a federal district court ruled in favor of the National Labor Relations Board and in favor of reinstating the workers. Starbucks then appealed to um, the circuit court circuit court also sided with the National Labor Relations Board and those workers have officially been rehired, reinstated. But the part of it that I really, really extra enjoy is Starbucks was also required to post this like court ordered affidavit from the district manager just laying out all of their sins. Like, um, oh, yeah, they have we to, like, fired them, and it was illegal, yeah. and we were forced to rehire them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. union busters. Yeah, so just, people. like, uh, walk of shame kind of stuff. Forced to post that in the Memphis store. So, um, you know, they never should have been fired in the first place. Um, and I would say, you know, the reason people have such low expectations that these will end with any sort of victories, because in the past, forget it, companies just come up with some excuse for why they fired the workers, and yeah. that's the uh, end of the story. Late. They were late a few times. That's why we fired them. Yeah. yeah that's what they'd say something like that. Exactly. Exactly. And and they're not. They're by far not the only workers who have been fired by Starbucks for organizing. Um, Jazz Brissack, who was the uh, one of the original organizers in Buffalo. She has been pushed down as well, and there's also, I think, uh, legal action there, too. She's hoping to be reinstated as well. So, anyway, um, you know, this National Labor Relations Board has been very strong. Like, they've actually done their job, and with very limited resources, um, it's been absolutely crucial in several decisions that allowed the Starbucks labor movement to go forward, allowed the Amazon labor movement to go forward. So... You know, I know there's a lot of, uh, not to, you know, turn it to a political point, but there's a lot of debate over like, oh, whether it's worth voting for Biden or just, or voting for a third party or what you should do. But in my opinion, this was always the greatest argument for voting for Joe Biden was the fact that you would get a halfway decent National Labor Relations Board and allow the growth of a true labor movement in the United States versus under Trump, you know, it was chock full of all kinds of union busting lawyers, which is what all the Republicans do when they're in uh, the White House. Yeah, uh, you're, you're soft peddling it. I'll go further because you you did the lesser evil vote for Joe Biden. I in New York did not. But I what was what did I say to you as soon as this story dropped? I was like, go ahead, do your victory lap. Because <laughs> this is, you know, this is the like, no, this is very much a lesser evil. And you guys understand, like when I did my whole my whole spiel about like, here's why I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. My, my argument was, look, if I was convinced he would be, he would do one of the policies that I care deeply about, I would do the lesser evil vote. But at the time I wasn't convinced he would do any of the policies that I cared about. And, you know, I did a whole list of, you know, Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage. Like you go down the list. Is he going to do any of these things? If I thought he was committed to even one of those things, I would have sucked it up and done the lesser evil vote. But now that he's been in office now for a while, you can actually look at his record, and there are plenty of things where it's like, shit, I didn't expect him to do this much student loan debt reduction. I thought I was getting used to the fact we'd get zero student loan debt reduction. I didn't expect him to sign the executive order that raises the minimum wage to $15 for every single federal employee and federal government contractor, which affects about 400,000 workers. I didn't expect that. And so when you see that, you gotta be honest, and you gotta be like, okay, I was wrong. If I had known this, I would have said, yeah, the lesser evil vote is, is not a terrible idea. I would have been a lot more open to that idea. And, you know, maybe you could say it was his fault for not convincing me while campaigning that he actually would do X, Y, and Z. 
But now that he's in office and he's doing these things, you got to keep it real. Facts have to come before ideology. Facts have to come before any sort of like, you know, position you take. Your positions have to be informed by the facts. And so when you look at this National Labor Relations Board doing what they just did, there's literally 0% chance this would have happened under Trump. Correct. These people would have been fired. It would have been over. Well, it would have been done. Forget it. It wouldn't have even gotten to that because there were some key decisions that were made by the National Labor Relations Board that enabled the very first Starbucks in Buffalo to unionize. If that doesn't right, happen, right, right, right. Yeah. none of the rest of this happens. And yeah. so, so there's no explosion in the labor movement. Is exactly. Your point, at, That's, all, at all. They would have nipped it in the bud. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think everyone on the left has to broadly agree that there is no left without a resurgent labor movement, that there is no like multiracial working class movement without a real uh, labor movement in this country. It is the most hopeful thing that's happening right now. And so, you know, with Trump in office, none of those green shoots are there. All of the like worker organizing, all these things that we're seeing happening right now, Home Depot workers getting the idea of, hey, maybe we'll form our union too. None of that occurs if you have a hostile National Labor Relations Board under Trump that just stops it all. So for the million flaws that Biden has, and Lord knows there are many, this one thing to me was worth, you know, worth the trade-off and made it very clear lesser evil, a true lesser evil vote. For the for a long time the pessimism was in vogue. And the, I was on riding that wave of the pessimism because I felt it. It was real. It was real as a heart attack. Everything I've ever said on these issues is coming straight from the heart and straight from my objective analysis. But now looking at little things that are happening here and there, we're just not in the same place that we were five, six months ago. We're just not. It's just not the same place. It's not even close to the same place. And people need to be honest about that. And so, look, this, is, this isn't even a small victory. This is a big victory. Because it also sends a message in the future. That's right. Oh, Starbucks or, or whatever other places they're unionizing. Amazon. This is, this is a, a message to you. Don't do If you do this, we're coming for your ass, too. The National Labor Relations Board is going to sue your ass, and then a federal judge is going to force you to put up a sign of shame that says, we're assholes and we're pricks and we're screwing over our fucking workers, and here's the sign that says our workers are great and we're, we're pricks. <laughs> like, okay, you, you want to have this battle? Let's have this battle. Let's see what it looks like when the law is on the side of the workers as it is right now. For and once. that's all we ever wanted. We All we ever wanted, and this is why I say I am kind of a tough on crime person in the sense that I'm tough on crimes that I think should actually be crimes. And so like the Wall Street criminals, throw the fucking book at them. The yeah. war criminals and the torturers, throw the fucking book at them. These fucking oligarch assholes, throw the book at them. If they're union busting, fuck, put the fear of God into them. I'd love to see that. And that's what we're beginning to see now. And so you know what? Keep it coming. I want to see a lot more of this. Yep, absolutely. Good news, guys.